Hey guys, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv. Welcome back. Today what we're going to be doing is talking about adding labels to Timeline Max instances so that we can navigate to any point in our timeline. Right here I have a very simple timeline set up that animates this guy here named Fred from home to school to work and to movies. And if I click back on home, you'll see that he rewinds through all those various destinations along the way. If I want him to go to work, he's going to pass by school and then go to work, then to movies, or all the way back to home. So this is a very simple example that's going to show you how we can put little labels or, or markers inside of our timelines and then navigate to or from them at any point in time. All right, so what we're going to do is start off with a file that's built with some very simple stuff. Um, let's just look at the FLA. Here we have this guy named Fred MC. We have buttons called Home MC, Work MC, School MC, and Movies MC. And we also have these little movie clips called Marker along the way. And what we're doing is using these guys to generate the X and Y values that Fred will be tweening to. So when I tell him to tween over to school, I'm really saying go to the X and Y positions of school pause underscore MC. When I tell him to tween to movies, I'm telling him, hey, find this marker's X and Y position. All right, makes it very easy if I ever want to change his ending position. Instead of figuring out all these crazy numeric values, I could put movies over here. And then when I test it, you'll see that that's where he ends up, okay? And eventually we'll be hiding the visibility of these markers. So let me just close this file here and move that marker back. Initially, what we have here is some code already in place. So let's talk through that. All right, oh, what's all that? Don't worry about it. The important thing here is that I already have a timeline set up that has four different tweens in it. Um, the first tween takes Fred over to where that home marker is, and it sets its scale to his scale to one. And then as he moves on to the school, he's going to get a little bit bigger, just to give us a little bit of a 3D uh, feel. And then we're going to go to work, and then movies. All right. So there are four very basic tweens that are tweening the X and Y position and the scale X and scale Y properties. Um, we also have our buttons set up to already have um, listeners for mouse clicks. Um, there's nothing inside the listener functions yet. And at the bottom here, we have some stuff just for the rollovers and rollouts of those buttons. Right? None of that really applies to what we're going to be learning here. So right now I have a timeline that has four tweens appended. So all this timeline is going to do first is play and have Fred move to those four different spots. Now in order to navigate to these different spots, I'm going to be adding labels. And so what I'm going to do is tell my timeline called TL to add a label. And let's not have caps on. And we're going to specify the label. And we're also going to specify what time it should be inserted into the timeline. So let's call this label home, and it also needs to know as a second parameter what point in time the label will be added. Well, I know that this is 0.5 seconds into the animation, so I could put in 0.5 really quick like that. And then I could also say for the other ones, let's just use this timing, okay? Once I get to the school, after that school tween happens, I'm going to put in a little label or a marker called school. And I know that this wants to be one second away. And then I'm going to add another label here very quickly for work. And now this isn't the best way to do it, but I'll, I want to demonstrate why. 0.5. And we're also going to, let's just do them all at once. Let's put a label in here called movies. All right, so Fred is going to go home to school to work and then catch a movie. I have no idea what time he's going to get home. Now, when we have our function go home, that's what's going to happen when the home button is pressed. I'm going to tell my timeline to tween two. And here, all I need to do is pass in a time or a label. 
and let's say, hey, you know what? Let's go home. So let's just try that one out. So the movie plays, then when I press on home, that timeline tweens itself back to the beginning, where that home label is. That's really quite cool. Now for school, I would do the same thing. Just do a little copy and paste. I'm going to tell the timeline to tween to a label called school. And remember, I already have that school label in at one second. And let's just do the same thing for go work. And we'll say, hey, you know what? Go to work. And lastly, we'll take him to the movies. All right, Fred's having a very long day. So here, the timeline plays once. We're going to go to work. We're going to go to home. Now to go to home, it has to rewind through to school and then to home. To go to movies, it's going to play the entire timeline to movies. Now you'll see that didn't work. What did I do? Between two movies, movies, oh, look at this. I had the time set wrong. So if we have 4.5 second tweens, that's going to put us at two seconds. So this all works, but it's not the best way to do it at all because those labels are now associated with specific hard-coded times. What if for whatever reason I want um, the tween that goes from home to school to take two seconds, all right? This is gonna blow up everything, okay? So now that takes two seconds, the timeline plays, but when I go to work, look where work is now. Well, that's one second into the animation. If I go to school, it's all the way back there. If I go to home, it's still at the beginning. But if I go to movies, which is two seconds in, it stops at school. So the whole point of using Timeline Max is so that we can sequence all these tweens and give them all their specific durations and have them all play flawlessly back to back. But since I hard-coded in where these labels are going to go, it totally breaks up if I change the duration of any of my tweens in the middle. So the way around this is instead of putting in the actual point in time where we want our label to go in and hard coding that value, I'm going to use a dynamic value. I'm going to say TL dot duration. So what this means is when this timeline is generated, once this tween goes in, that timeline has a duration of 0.5 seconds. So it knows, all right, the duration is now 0.5. If I make this duration here 2, Timeline Max knows that when I add this label, the current duration of the tween is 0.5 plus 2, which is 2.5. So I'm always going to just be specifying TL dot duration. Instead of saying, oh, work should be 1.5 seconds later, I'm going to say the timeline's current duration, meaning the sum total of the duration of all the previous tweens. And now we're also going to do the same thing for this last label. I'm going to say tl.duration. Um, let's set this value back to 0.5. Okay. We'll have our timeline play very quickly. And you'll just see that now all those labels are added at the proper time. And I can tween to and from any um, label. Now that I'm using tl.duration, the duration of the timeline when I'm adding each of these labels, I can make this first tween be 1 second, the next one 0.5 seconds, the next tween 0.2 seconds, 3 seconds, whatever, and the last tween will be 1 second. So I've changed the duration of all the tweens, I'm not ch changing any of the label code, and it still is going to work perfectly. Home always takes me to home, and work always takes me to work. I want to go to the movies, no problem. Go to school, it all works. So again, Every time I add a new tween, I'm just going to put a little marker in, or a label, technically. I'm um, going to give it a name, and I'm also going to say, all right, put it in at the current duration, the total time of the timeline. All right, so very, very, very flexible. Lastly, what I might want to do um, is just hide those markers. I cheated a little bit, and I have some code here that says, hey, tell home, pause, 
to have its visible set to false and all those little green symbols that I'm using. So I'm just going to select that code, uncomment, and now I don't see those markers anymore and all the buttons work. Um, now, once you get familiar with this concept, you can make your timelines much more intricate. You can be tweening multiple objects and you can really literally navigate a whole website and have all the transitions inside of Timeline Max. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial here. You can download the files from snorkel.tv and uh, Happy New Year everybody. Um, I'm really happy with all the feedback I've been getting lately and I can't thank you guys enough. Alright, take it easy.